All right, folks, welcome to 7th Season Studios. We are always trying to bring you the latest and greatest in Affinity products and tutorials, and we are pleased to announce that we have partnered with Affinity Graphics this year to bring you the coolest tools for Affinity. Now, Affinity Graphics is a new website. They're bringing in all of the Affinity brush packs, LUTs, styles, everything you could think of for Affinity. These guys are going to host, so it'll be one-stop shopping strictly for Affinity. So this is a huge opportunity. And 7th Season Studios, seeing the value in this, we wanted to create some brushes that can be hosted on Affinity Graphics that you can use and download for free to bring you the latest and greatest in brushes, styles, asset packs. We're planning on doing a lot this year with this site. So this tutorial is going to use materials from Affinity Graphics, totally 100% free. All of the tools in this tutorial are free. So download the tools from the link below, and let's go ahead and roll the credits into the tutorial. All right, we'll see you inside. All right, folks, and welcome to this week's tutorial. This week's tutorial is all about texture. So this is gonna be a little bit longer one, but we're gonna show you how to make hand brush textures. So we're gonna show you the whole process, and then we're gonna show you how to actually work with the textures in Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer in order to create some really cool stuff. So you're gonna learn everything from how to set up your materials, then we're gonna show you how I actually painted these, then I'm gonna show you how I adjusted them, and lastly, we're gonna show you some really cool projects you can make with them. So let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. All right, so now that you saw how I set it up and how I actually worked with them, let's go ahead and take it into Affinity Photo, and I'm gonna show you in Affinity Photo how I edited them in order to get a sellable texture. All right, folks, welcome back to our texture lesson. So now that you've got the paper textures, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you how to adjust these textures. But you can do the exact same thing in Affinity Photo, so either program will work the exact same way. You go to File, Open, and you find wherever it is that you have put your textures. So let's go ahead and find our ink brush textures. Let's go to the raw JPEG files, and I'm gonna use texture one. When you open it up, you'll see that the scan had a lot of information here, and it's not quite dark black. So there's actually a three-step process. Let me go ahead and close out my studio here. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna clear out the library and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shut down macros. All right, so step one, crop it. Bring it down to the black. Bring it in so that you've got that good look there. And it doesn't matter if you go a little bit inside, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. You can certainly make it perfect if you really wanted to. I'm gonna make it a little bit inside. And then once you've got it where you want it, you go ahead and hit enter, and now you have the image isolated. So now all you gotta do is come up to the adjustment layer, pop on a levels adjustment, and now remember, if black conceals, white reveals, and so you're gonna crank down the blacks. Now you see as you keep cranking them down, eventually you get too much black. You can crank it down wherever you think you want it. I kinda like it right about here. And then you can crank in the white a little bit, and I think that it looks good right about there. So the layer structure is levels adjustment and background. Now all you gotta do, file save as, and then file export, export it as a JPEG, name it, set it, forget it, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do all 10 of them here, and then we'll catch you back here and I'll show you how to use them in Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. By the way, if you're an Affinity Designer, 
It's the exact same process. Place the image in where you've got it. Then once you do that, crop out the image here with the crop tool. And then in the layers panel, let's go ahead. I might not have the layers panel on. There's your adjustment layer right there for levels. So the exact same keystrokes apply in Affinity Designer as does Affinity Photo. All right, we'll see you in the next one. All right, folks, so well, now that we've got this part, let's go ahead in this tutorial and let's go ahead and take a look at this texture pack available down below. And we're gonna show you exactly how we are using this texture in both Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo in order to make this happen. All right, we'll see you inside. All right, folks, welcome back to Affinity Designer. So in Affinity Designer, we're gonna show you how to use the textures that you made as part of a texture through the adjustment of blend mode. So here, if we go to File, New, Let's just go ahead and make any size document, right? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose a print document. I'm gonna use a letter size print document, eight and a half by 11, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now, the cool thing here is that you could grab theoretically any rectangle, any color, any layer that you wanted to. And now what you can do with it, let's go ahead and change the color. So we're gonna come down, we're gonna find the color tab and it looks like I might have closed it. So to find a tab you don't have, go to View, Studio, Color, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use our colors for A27C00. That's the hex code for the type of yellow that we use here at Seven Season Studios. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to File, Place, find any texture that you want. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use this texture here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click and drag it out. Now again, you can find these textures in the link below, so you know where to go to get them if you didn't make them. And now, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna adjust the blend modes. Now to do that, let's bring out the Layers tab. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna start playing with the blend mode. Now it really depends on what you're trying to do. I like the color burn. You can certainly do a whole lot with this. So if you wanted to do something in soft light, hard light, it really depends on what you're trying to do with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the color burn. All right, now, if that's a little bit intense for you, you can always come down and subtly adjust out some of the texture. So you can adjust the opacity of the layer in order to make this thing pretty awesome. Now you can do some other stuff with it. All right, so once you have this, I brought out the layer panel here. You can absolutely move more textures in. We can go to File, Place, and you can double up on the textures. Let's go ahead and grab, I don't know, this one. Come down here, bring this in, and now what we're going to do, that is actually really cool. We got double color burn on that one. That's actually really cool in a soft light. What I'm probably gonna do then, let's go ahead and go with the soft light. Where'd I put it? Soft light, and let's go ahead and turn this down ever so slightly. Now you can see we can start layering textures out, and you see how one will work, but when you start moving them out, you get a completely different look to your art. All right, that's a little bit on how to use this in Affinity Designer. Hope you like the textures. Go ahead, download them at the link below, and if you have any questions or you wanna see other tutorials on texture, go ahead and hit me up. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one. All right, folks, in this lesson, we're gonna show you how to take those handmade textures and we're gonna show you how to make them into rasterized masks. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need any two images, right? And I'd make them definitely contrasting so that it shows up. I'm gonna use this image here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this green background, let's say. All right, now, this is just a sketched out background, right? It's part of a larger piece. But the thing is, I wanted to make it definitely contrasty as opposed to the other. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to File, Place. And when I go to File, Place, I'm gonna find wherever I put these beautiful brush textures. So let's go ahead and find these ink brush textures. And let's go into the, oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to probably pick, um, let's say this one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn it now on its side. So you guys have seen this show before. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna place it 
We're going to cover it just like this. And now what we're going to do, we're going to come over to layer and we're going to rasterize it to a mask. All right. So what we've got here now is this image with the mask outside of it. Now you're saying, what do I do with this? Right? Watch this. If you go to file place, and you grab another image. So I'll grab a very contrasting image here. I pulled two images of different contrast. And I come over here. Now you see that this image has similar traits, but it's red. And I pull it down into here. Nothing happens. But watch this. Merge that background that you had with that brush texture. Now. I'm holding control and I'm grabbing both layers and I'm merging visible. And now let's remove the brush texture, delete. Nope. Let's delete the whole layer. Huh? How about that? And let's go ahead and delete the background layer. And you'll see now that you've got this red part showing through and you've got some flecks of green. Now, the cool thing is, Let's make sure we're on the red image and let's just go ahead and blow this thing up large and in charge here. You'll see how that mask we have really begins to show through. That's what these things do is they allow you to really position things inside. Now we can do some other things. If I grabbed even a third image, watch this. I grab this vector skull and now it's on top, right? If you take it and you drag it in down between, look at what just happens now. Now I got this really awesome layered effect going on. That's the power of these textures as raster masks. So I want to just walk you through the order of operations one more time. Let's make sure you fully understand this. Okay, so I'm coming out with nothing, right? I'm just going to delete everything away. All right, let's just go ahead and close that all out. All right, file, open, open any file, file, place, find wherever it is that you hid these textures, and I'll use a different texture this time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, oh, this one right here. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to bring it up large and in charge, a little bit bigger than what I normally would. And now, we're going to take this here and what we're going to do with this, we're going to hold control. All right. So now what we're going to do with it, we're coming up to the layer that has the brush texture, rasterize it over to a mask. We're in pretty good shape. Now we're ready to go. Now, in order to do this part, hold control, grab both layers, merge the visible, delete out your other layers and delete that leaves you a nice rasterized mask that you can put something behind all right folks that's how to kind of use this as a rasterized mask these hand done textures are absolutely phenomenal and there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with them all right we'll see you in the next one all right, folks, hope you liked the tutorial. If you want more like this in terms of how to turn physical objects into digital art, go ahead and drop me a note below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from us, go ahead, subscribe down below. And make sure to check out Seven Season Studios for free courses on Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and all of these great tools. All right, we'll see you in the next one.